Hi, I'm Arsham, and this series of videos about computer science and game development are sponsored by Kidicode. I've started taking a course called CS50 made by Harvard, which gives you all the knowledge you need for computer science and game development. And this series of videos are summarized versions of that course. Feel free to check it out for yourself. Now on to the video. So in the previous videos, we got familiar with computers and number systems. But in the upcoming videos, we're going to be starting with programming. But first, we need to put on our training wheels and start with simple coding by using an application called Scratch, which helps you learn the basics of coding without actually having to write code, but instead using blocks to represent it. So okay, this is where we're going to be coding in this video. And I'm going to give you guys some examples of basically a few sample uh, projects or sample things that we can do to make you more familiar with programming in general and also Scratch. But we won't be using Scratch after this. This is just uh, a way to boost up the basics or foundations of your programming skills. So let's get started. Well, Scratch is basically just, just a place where you can code, but instead of writing down code, you can just drag and drop code, like for example this. So basically, move 10 steps. Uh, we'll, we'll get onto those later, but for now, as you guys can see, once you activate this, it keeps moving. So that's just one example. And as you guys can see, we haven't typed any of this down. We, we're just dragging and dropping. So this helps especially because since we're starting off coding, we don't really know much about it. So yeah. And there's so many things about here. Uh, so many tabs that we can use, actually. They are all pretty useful. We have motion, which is basically about the, uh, the cat. Basically, their mascot is a cat. Uh, then we have the looks which is basically uh, look somewhere, uh, things, all of this, etc. And also we have sound. We have sound, we can play sound, different pitches and all those stuff. Events, we'll get onto those later. Control, basically like repeating and all those stuff. Sensing, like changing colors, is it touching? If, if you're holding, uh, hovering over it, it would do something or something else. And operators, basically plus minus divide times. We'll get onto those in the later videos about a bit more in depth. And also variables. And my blocks is you can just create your own blocks, but we don't really need to use that for now. Uh, so basically, variables are something that you can store data temporarily. So we'll get onto those later on, but we don't really need to do those. Okay, let's start with our first example, which is basically just making the cat say hello. So what we need to do is go to events. And once we go to events, what we need to do is basically just drag and drop when clicked flag. So that means basically when our program has been run so basically this means go so make it easier instead of run okay so when it's clicked we want to do certain amount of things or certain things that we want to do so basically what we want to do now is go to i think it was sensing no sorry hello yes we wanted to basically say hello and all this does is basically when you click this this cat or this uh sprite we call them sprites which is basically just an image as you guys can see over here so yeah, uh, they're called sprites, and once we click go, it will say hello for two seconds. So let's click go, and say hello for two seconds, and it would disappear. And as you guys can see, the program stopped itself, because basically there's nothing else to do. Okay, the next thing we want to do is ask the user for their name. So how we do that, it's pretty simple. So basically what we do is just uh, go to sensing, and get this block ask user what's your name and wait basically just wait for their response and as you guys can see we're just asking it right so basically if you come here if you type for example max it, it wouldn't do anything with the name right that's what answer comes in for but right now we can't really say like hello max right so what we have to do is basically find a way to merge and say a bunch of things at the same time so let's for example bring this say hello here right we have this but let's take some operands and basically we want join and what join is is basically joins two things together let's say in this case it's hello and the name we want so instead of apple which was the example in there we're gonna put hello comma and we want the name of the person so we don't need this block you guys can drag and drop it or click delete on your keyboard so we want the name of the person so how we do that is basically take this answer basically is basically the answer of this question. So we drag and drop it instead of this banana and we're gonna put it there. So now if we run it, it's gonna ask us a name. What's your name? I'm gonna put Max 
for example, and we're going to enter hello, comma, max. So this process of joining two uh, basically strings, as we call them, we can I'll later on explain about those in later videos, but for now, we're just going to call them texts, for example. Uh, this uh, operation is called concatenation, which is basically merging two things, basically joining, as it, as it calls it over here. Okay, let's move on to our second example. And in this example, we don't really need these, so we're going to throw them away. And what we're going to do in this example is actually play a sound effect. So basically, we need to go to the sound panel, we click on sound, and now we have all these options over here. But what we want to do is just play a meow sound, right? So when we start, it's going to play a sound, but it's only going to play it once. We want to repeat it a certain amount of times. So how do we do that? Well, we want to use something called a loop, or in this case, uh, in uh, Scratch actually, it's called the repeat. And let's say we want to repeat it 10 times, for example. And what we do, uh, uh, how this works actually, is basically whatever is inside this block, or inside this repeat block that's covering it, would be repeated, no matter what code it is actually. So now let's play it, but uh, once I play it, we're going to notice something annoying. As you guys can see, it's repeating back to back to back without stop, and normal cats don't really do that. So what we want to do is just drag this block in. Basically what this does, it waits one second, it adds a delay to it basically. So now, let's for example change it to 2, and now let's press play. As you guys can see, it waits a bit, and then it plays the sound again. So this is much better than before, because it did it non-stop. Okay, so that was our second example, now let's move on to our third. So what we're going to do in this one, we also don't need this again anymore. So we want the cat to follow our mouse wherever it goes on this panel over here, which is our uh, basically output panel. So yeah, let's, uh, let's try that. So we want to do this forever. So basically when mouse click is initialized, we need this always. And we want to do it forever. So last time we used 10. We wanted to repeat it a certain amount of times. But this time we want to fall... Uh, it, we want it to follow our uh, cursor wherever we go. So basically, uh, forever is our repeat, which never stops, you, it, whatever you do about it. So yeah, now what we want to do is make it move and rotate towards our cursor. So how we do that is pretty simple. Basically, move towards, of course, now if we run it, it keeps going, going, going. Let's bring, bring it back. Cool. Okay, and what we wanted to do is point towards our mouse pointer. So every time this uh, loop happens, it moves 10 steps, and then it looks towards our mouse pointer. It, this happens very quickly, but for now we can do this. As you guys can see, it's moving towards our mouse pointer. Really cool, actually. Okay, so that was our third example. Now let's move on to our fourth. And in this one, we're going to make use of a programming concept called variables. And it's a way to store temporary values or data. So let's get started. So what we have here is basically the variables tab, so you can click it. And we want to make a variable, and we want to call it counter. So because we want to count up, I'll show you guys what I mean by now. So yeah, now what we want to do is get rid of this. We don't really need this. And as you guys can see over here in this uh, panel, a counter tab has appeared. So basically, this counts uh, counts up every time. So what we want to do initially, of course, every time we run our program, we want our counter to be set to zero, right? So we drag this one. So set counter, which is our counter variable, or it can be any other variable that you have, uh, to zero initially. You can set this to any number, but initially, of course, we want it to be zero. And you can move this around if you like. And so yeah, what we want to do, so if we run this right now, nothing would happen, because we're not doing anything. We're just setting it to zero, which it was already initially zero. But what we want to do is every time, every, for example, one second, we want it to increment by one. And increment means basically just add one to the counter. So how we do that, we want a loop, and we want it to loop forever, right? So that's, we've already done that. And we want it to say, the, we want the cat to say the number every few seconds or so. So basically what we want to do is just change, take, uh, maybe not this one. We can say hello, uh, but instead of hello, we want to set it to our variable. So we want to say the number that, it's being incremented or the number it is currently. So let's drag and drop our counter variable uh, over to this part as you guys can see it clicks. So right now it's still not going to do anything, right? Because it's going to say zero forever. But the thing is we're not doing anything to it. 
So we want to increment it by one. But how do we do that? Again, this is pretty simple by using this. So we do the change counter variable by one. So basically it means increment it by one. And as you guys can see, if I do it, it's going to count way, way too quickly. So, it, but it's working actually. So it went from zero to 200. But what we wanted to do, uh, instead of using say hello, we wanted to use this, say hello for a certain amount of time. So let's say one second. So basically just drag and drop this out. We don't need this one anymore. And now we can try it. So as you guys can see, now instead of going back and forth, like constantly just incrementing by one, now every one second it's going to increment it and it's going to show it. So this is pretty cool and this is a good way uh, uh, of showing what incrementation is. And incrementation is actually pretty important in programming itself. We're going to be going on to that when we actually start programming in our languages like Python and C. So yeah, basically this is that example. So these were a few examples of programming in Scratch. But in the upcoming videos, we will actually be starting to write code instead of dragging and dropping. But don't worry, we're going to go slowly. And I will compare the things I'm going to teach to what we did in Scratch, so it's a bit easier for you guys to understand. Okay, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell. It makes you notified every time I upload. Thank you for watching and bye bye.